So what is DR as a service? Um, well, for, interestingly, if you read, I'm not going to read the entire definition to you. I'll give you the opportunity to read that for yourselves. But, but interestingly, it is predominantly based on virtualized infrastructure. Um, and this is where there is becoming this, uh, I guess, this gray area in the market of, of who's providing what. And obviously, per, the purpose of this, this sort of uh, seminar today is that what we're finding is that most DR as a service providers are actually cloud service providers who see an opportunity to provide virtual compute, virtual storage, uh, you know, as, as a, a DR platform, if you like. But even if it is, you know, even if you do come across an organization that provides a, that, the full service, um, it's just for virtual predominantly. And you know, most customers that I talk to will have a Unix box that sat in the corner, sat there for the last 10 years, doing its job, no one touches it. Um, so who's going to recover that? You know, it's not incorporating your entire IT infrastructure. Um, so that has its own problems, obviously. Um, so, so then when you think about that, and you know, lots of organizations, they, they do have that type of infrastructure. Okay, well, if I do go down this DR as a service route, I then need to provide, have another provider who's going to provide the recovery of my Unix infrastructure, right? Then I've got, so then I've got two different solutions to provide DR with two different providers and it becomes very complex. So not only have I got a complex DR strategy, but then I've also got to incorporate that into my overarching BC plan. And it all gets a little bit messy. Um, so it, it, the, the, there is absolutely benefit in looking at providing these types of services, but there is a lot of uh, devil in the detail, if you like. So as I said, that, that gives us this challenge of, okay, well, I've got my own or you know, replicated data center somewhere, and then I've got my cloud-based service, my DR as a service out in the cloud. And one of the common mistakes then is, okay, well, where where, am I, where are certain applications going to sit? And you know, does my user who sat there looking, or stood there looking quite confused, does he connect to data center A or data center B? How do how are we going to be able to understand that and provision that prior to the disaster? Because we don't know where that disaster is going to occur and what systems it's going to impact. And one of the common mistakes that we see is, is around connecting our users. We're very focused on fast recovery times and our data, but connecting our users to that infrastructure is also obviously one of the most important elements that, that is sometimes, and in a lot of cases, the Icebox customers not really sort of provisioned properly. Are those animations by the fast 36 gigabytes? <laughs> <laughs> very good, but they were consume a huge amount of resource. Anyway. <laughs> so it's all bought and paid for, Mike. <laughs> actually, no. Critical or not? Actually, uh, no, not at all. Um, okay, so <laughs> thanks. Um, so, what should a DR as a service actually be? So, what it should. So, if you think about the definition and the complexity of that, what that gives us with that definition is what it, it should be focused on is is recovery time objective. That's first and foremost what we are looking at. And if you think about it, the shorter our recovery time objective becomes, it's actually moving away from just being a DR solution to being a actually a business continuity solution or part of my business continuity solution because it's fast recovery and I want to be up as quickly as I possibly can. It should be obviously based, as I've touched on, on both virtual and physical infrastructure and both Windows and Unix infrastructure um, because, again, something that isn't sometimes thought through properly. And it should all be from the you know the cloud service provider's data center. So whether it's physical or virtual, it should be irrelevant. You should be able to recover it all in one place and connect to it from one location or multiple locations. Um, and very much like having primary cloud services where you have you know you might host websites or these types of things in a in a cloud-based service. And one of the things that Mike's talked about in, in previous um, seminars that we've done is it's very easy to get into the cloud, but how do you get back out? And what's the exit strategy or these? But if you think about it from a DR perspective, if I'm going to recover in the cloud, I need to be able to take that back into my own data center at some point. So how am I going to do that? So incorporating that as part of your recovery strategy, it needs to be in there. How are you going to do that? Um, obviously, I say obviously, but you know, one of the benefits should be that you can test it annually very easily not have to relocate you know, all your people or even just your IT staff for, th for three to five days uh, of one week every year, you know, potentially having the, the, the ability to, uh, to test that remotely. Um, 
and it does then start to deliver this business continuity piece that we've talked about. 